Welcome to another video about the Maserati. Again, <laughs> I seem to be working on this thing way too much. Anyway, this video, I'm looking at this nasty gap here caused by my little uh, interaction with a curb a few weeks ago. So there's a bit of a gap down here where it's been, the bumper's been pulled forward, it's pulled out of here a bit, and the old uh, inner wheel mudguard, uh, wheel mudguard supports here are really rusty. So I'm going to be looking at that and um, also looking at how you take the headlamps out and how you repair a headlamp when you've got all the uh, little tabs broken on it. But don't want to pay £1,600, I think it's £2,000 actually, for a new headlight. So hopefully this video will be somewhat useful and interesting to you. And if you get to the end of it and you think, yeah, that was, that was not too bad, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. Thanks very much. So the front bumper fixes on in a number of places. It fixes along the top there, just underneath where the bonnet sits. It fixes at the back of the wheel arch, which is where I've got the damage, where it's basically tried to pull away from the wing. Um, but it also fixes along the front of the under tray, and the under tray actually gives the front bumper a lot of extra strength. And I'm missing the under tray, so that's something that I need to rectify uh, during this little segment of work. So here is the uh, front bumper mount. I've cleaned it up a bit. Let's go and put new pop rivets in. I'm gonna put a bit of glue around there, I think. But I got fed up with the way the uh, these little brackets worked because they were bent to, absolutely bent up. Now, obviously they've probably designed it so that if you smack the front bumper, it bends these and perhaps breaks the bumper rather than tearing out the wing, which does kind of make sense, I suppose. But I just can't. Yeah, I've straightened it all out and it just feels like a weak point. Also, it needs painting because it's got rust. Only a little bit of surface rust, but still. I could just grease and stick on, or I could just make a new one out of stainless steel and slightly thicker stainless steel at that. So that's what I've done. So I'm going to fit this on and that hopefully work a bit better. And this blimmin' bolt here, up inside the wheel arch, cost me a load of drill bits about six drill bits to drill it out. For some reason it was just blunting everything as if it was hardened or something. Absolute nightmare to get out. Right on next to the headlamp where the bumper attaches, you know, it's a bumper attachment bolt. Nightmare to get out. So the headlight has three attachment points. One on the top corner, one on the bottom corner that you can see there easily, and then one down in the sort of edge corners there. On my driver side headlamp, for some reason, all the lugs were broken and someone had basically sort of rigged the headlamp in there so that it wouldn't move. And they did a good job because for a year that I've been driving it and God knows how many years before that, it passed MOTs, it didn't move around and the adaptive lighting in it is functioning perfectly. But now's the time while I'm doing this to actually take it out and fix those lugs. All right, so fixing up my headlamp. I finally got the front bumper off and I found a few problems on one of the headlamps. This had a crack in it, so I have put some JB high heat epoxy paste in there just to... The crack was only slight, but I thought I'd better reinforce it. And I've used a little bit of this bi-directional glass fibre weave mat. Um, just to make sure it's strong. Just to make sure it never ever cracks or goes through. This one is actually half missing, so I've got some stainless steel welding wire my MIG welder and I've made these rings and I'm sort of linking it in and I'll use the JB um, this paste again I use this paste again to just sort of reinforce it and make it up I'm hoping that this idea will work where I can put some grease on the headlamp adjuster and before I stick it in there and mold the JB weld in I'm hoping that a little bit of grease and it will still be adjustable might not I'll probably try using a bit of clean film on it just to make sure. The third thing is broken off too, but that's quite a simple quick break, so that should hopefully be quite easy to fix. Very quick, I'm in a right mess here, but here I am getting it in, then I'm gonna cover it in Aerodite, get some epoxy glue, and then cover it in clean film to pull it all tight and make sure it's penetrated into the bi-directional weave. 
So this one is uh, the last one to do. As you can see, it's a fairly nice fit on whatever repair someone else did. So I'm just going to glue it back into that repair. And then again, I'm going to use the uh, JMB epoxy stuff to build a new sort of surround all the way around the outside here without infringing on any of that. Just around the edge here. Um, don't shut up, Willie. Really. He talks more or he starts bugging me whenever I'm out here. Um, and then I'm going to glue this bit here, glue a bit along the bit there, and then that should be good. So I've done some cross hatching here and cross hatching here. I've cleaned all this way and there's little lumpy bits that I can get all the stuff into. So now I'm just going to glue that top piece on and then uh, cover it around with everything. Right, so here I'm just going to have this bit of wire that goes around there and then the epoxy I'm just going to very carefully further it in there and all around there and it'll just give a real mechanical link to the plastic to this bit of plastic because that's where the join is across there. So at this point of the video some of you might be thinking what a bodgy thing to do. Well I'm a bodgy kind of guy and you know some of you might be thinking if you've got a Maserati, you should just be able to afford it and you should put proper parts on it. And if the part's broken, you should change it. It doesn't matter if it's 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. Otherwise, you shouldn't have the car. I've seen a video that's been saying something similar to that recently, and it really gets on my nerves because at the end of the day, you're only on planet Earth for a very short time. And as far as you can, you shouldn't let your life experiences be governed by your social economic status. So I'm always trying to live beyond my means and I do a reasonably good job of it. And how do I do a good job of it? Well, basically, when I have a problem with things like headlamps, I basically look at them and I think, right, can I repair what I've got? If I can't repair what I've got and I've got to buy a part, I look for a good second-hand part. If I can't find a good second-hand part, then maybe I go to a try and get a discount part from somewhere at a cheaper price. The last thing I'd ever do is go to a dealer and buy a standard part straight off the shelf. The other thing I do, of course, is I fix everything myself. And that's essentially the way that I managed to afford this car. And what I would say to anyone out there is that if you're looking to have a car like this and you can fix it yourself, it's actually a relatively cheap, inexpensive car to have. Yes, there's a few gotchas. There's a few jobs that are, you know, the parts you have to get from Maserati and they're very expensive. But even in those cases, if the labor is not the issue because you're doing it yourself, you'll be in a much better state. You might be thinking, yeah, but not everyone can do these types of jobs. Well, I don't know. I mean, I learned how to do mechanics when I was very young because basically I didn't trust anyone to look after my car and I didn't have any money. Every time I approach a job, I don't actually know how I'm going to do it. Um, and what I do is I go on Google, I have a quick look on Google, I have a look on the forums, and then I just basically plow ahead. Um, and it works. So these cars might be a bit difficult, they might be a bit expensive, you'd think, but if you can do it yourself, you can make them affordable. And in this particular case, by fixing these tabs like this, what I'm managing to do is I'm managing to save a big chunk of money and turn what could potentially be a 1,500, 2,000 pound job, Maserati, perhaps two and a half thousand pound job, independent, 2,000, I'm turning it into a six pound job, about five pound 99 for a tub of glue. And the end result is gonna be just as strong, if not stronger than the standard headlamps would have been fresh out of a brand new box. At this point, I feel like I should qualify my statement somewhat. If you've not worked on cars before and you want to try, pick something that's not safety critical, that's not expensive, so it doesn't matter if you mess it up and just Go on Google, go on forums, and then give it a go. Don't worry about making mistakes. Don't worry about messing that up a few times. You know, that happens to everyone. I do it regularly. But make sure that it's something that's not going to kill you if you get it wrong. 
So clean film kind of worked, but I can't get these last bits off. Um, I did this on a boat. I rebuilt a boat from Marina years ago. And I think it was before the time of Peel Ply or <laughs> many, many years ago. Um, and I used basically a, um, basically I used parcel tape on top of the resin, on top of the glass fiber. And I got a really nice smooth finish in places. So you only had to do a little bit of surface fairing on. Um, you, you'd use pill ply now, which is specially made for this. Clean film's a little bit too weak. Doesn't matter for this case at all because it's done exactly what I wanted to do. It's smoothed everything over. It's kept it all contained and, you know, got it good. Right, so these are some of the panels off of the car. That's great, isn't it? There was a small hole, a drilled hole there that the inner wheel arch plugs into. And obviously it got rust there and it just went round here like crazy. So I've got a weld a panel in there because that would have been 50 quid and I'm not paying 50 quid for another panel. This on the other hand, this is just gone. And these are 83, so almost 100 quid each. Um, but they, yeah, it's just gone. There's no point trying to save any of that. I, I could try welding all that down there together, but it's just not worth it. So I've ordered new ones and I'm going to clean them all off. The new ones, obviously, clean the paint on the new ones and then epoxy paint them as well. And look, it's those little red bugs type. What are those little things called? I can't remember. Tons of them everywhere. Great. So anyhow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a panel like that out of here because all here is fairly, fairly strong. You can actually see here that I actually tidied this up with the wire brush and it looked really good. As soon as you go with the flap disc, you're straight into rust again. Because what happens is wire brushes tend to just polish the rust. And you get this sort of black look. And you think, oh, that's nice and clean now. And then you get the flap disc on there and no, it's a whole other chunk of rust. I've even had it where I've used a wire brush and made it that nice sort of black look. And then got my screwdriver, chipped it. And it's actually been a layer of rust on top of the metal and the whole layers come off revealing fresh rust underneath so um yeah you can't really trust wire brushes too much anyhow that's the bad bit there's good metal all the way around here so i'm going to cut a piece of stainless steel like this i'm going to cut this piece out of here and then i'll tig weld it together with trusty old tig over there the other thing I need to do is make this bracket for the wheel arch. Mine, the screws rusted to the nut that's in there. Don't know why manufacturers don't just use stainless steel nuts on the wheel arches, or well, much of the car actually. Um, anyhow, I've got to make up a, a new bracket. I'm going to make it out of stainless steel. I did think about cutting a piece of box like this, but it's not quite wide enough. It's 20 millimeters and I might struggle. I don't know. I want it to be really strong. That might actually do it, because then what I could do is I could just chop here, chop here, and then bend the tabs up, bend those bits up to make the tabs that go there and there. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use stainless steel pop rivets to pop rivet it to the car. I could weld it on, but if I do that, whatever's behind it, I'm going to heat up. And I don't know what's behind it. And I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to pop rivet it with big 5 mil stainless steel pop rivets. They're good enough for mass steps. They're good enough for this, believe me. All right, so here I am welding it up. It's oil canning a little bit badly. But then again, it's bolted on in so many places, it'll be fine on the car. And obviously, I can try and straighten it and shrink it a little bit and get it in the right place. Just got to finish the last bits of TIG. Another bracket here. The... Um, bolt got rusted in so what I've done is I've drilled out the bolt and I've just welded a stainless steel nut straight onto the original bolt and that seems to work quite well and now it's going to be stainless steel into stainless steel so that should fix that one once it's all nice and cleaned and painted oh, I'll better finish off so a quick word on TIG welding TIG welding is actually it's a bit of a skill it's a bit of an art but it's not terribly difficult to learn there's some fantastic youtube videos out there from really really accomplished welders that will help you learn it and the thing i've found in life is just welding in general whether it be mig or tig it's a really useful skill to develop 
And I use it for everything from work on cars to boats to planes to, you know, even when I'm fitting something on the house, you know, sometimes grabbing a bit of stainless or a bit of steel and welding a bracket, you know, is substantially easier than driving to some awful DIY store and having to pay some huge amount of money for something that they've bung together in 10 seconds and yet charge a ton of money for. So it's a really useful skill to develop, I think. And with enough motivation, work, and using those YouTube videos and dedicating yourself to it, I think anyone can do it. Right, so here we go. Here is the panel. I've welded it all in. I've cleaned it up as best I blimmin' could with wire brushes, grinding discs, cutting discs, flat discs, to get into all the very nooks and crannies and a wire brush in the drill. You can never get it fully out. So there's a little bit in the corner there that I just can't quite get to, or rather I've got to the point where I've had enough. So all I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use a little bit of this cure rust, like I've done here, just around in the nooks and crannies, just to make sure there's nothing in there at all. I don't really like using cure rust, but you know, I, there's no way I can get in between two bits of steel that have been welded together, for example. So you've got to get something that can get in there and just phosphoric acid burn out a little bit of the rust, you know? So then I'm, once this has gone off, I'm actually going to clean it all off as best I can again around those corners and then acetone and then I've got Jotun Jotamastic Epoxy. You might think I'm going over the top, but believe me, um, rust, I've, I've had tons of experience with rust and you know if you really want to get rid of it you have to get the preparation 100 percent i've had it on the boat so many times where i thought oh i've got that really good and then a couple of years and rust is coming back through again so i really really make sure I and mean, the best thing to have done with these would have been to have got them shop blasted but shop blasters are miles from here i really should get myself a shop blast rig a proper one one of these days there you go so I've cleaned everything off, including the new bits that were painted in this stuff, but there was a couple of scratches on them. And so they'd rush, you'd start getting rust on brand new panels. So I've got five bits to paint all hung up and I'm using this stuff, Jotun Jotamastic, which is what I use on the boat. It's about hundred quid now for five liters. It's a modified epoxy, really good stuff. No doubt terrible wind noise, but here we go. There's the front panel all in. I've got this gap nigh on perfect now. It took ages to set up the headlamp. I had to use washers on that one that I, um, the bracket that I made up because I couldn't use the adjusters. The adjusters everywhere else works. So there's the bracket up there. So there's a bolt there, a bolt down in that corner there, and a bolt up there. There's two bolts in that little bracket up there, and that's the headlamp. This connector is one of those ones where you have to slide the grey clip out to the side and then you can pull it out. So this grey clip, you push those bits out and it clicks out and then you pull the thing off, those grey bits here. Quick note here, while I had all this apart, there's that little round hook. It's a manual bonnet catch release, should you require it. So I've bonded the rest of everything. I've welded up that panel and put all those boxes back in. I've used stainless steel bolts and stainless steel washers. There's the little bracket I made up new and pop riveted back on again. So I'm ready for the wheel arch now. And then she'll be back on the ground again. So there we go. There's a pile of rusty old manky screws that I've taken out. I bought most of mine from Tool Station actually because they've got the M6 by 16 millimeter bolts that I used here, the direct replacements, and they had the washers. They're about £2.29 for 10 or something. They had the washers for about seven quid, something like that, 50 of them. So there's, yeah, so I've done everything. I ran out of those bolts, so I've used Allen keys, like the originals actually. These are identical to the original uh, ones they used, but mine won't rust and go manky like that. So that's all bolted in there now, all with stainless steel. I drilled the plug, eight millimeter hole in that front of that box. It's stainless steel, so I could just drill straight into it. The paint I welded in is stainless steel. And I just plug that in, 
that's the bracket done we're all good and gone fantastic and there after fitting everything is the finished product nice tight line there really bolted up nice and tight should be absolutely fine well this is a big box so fresh from euro spares a rather cool under tray now this is quite expensive i mean you're talking about 90 quid i think it is brand new original maserati under tray straight from the factory but on ebay these things are like 150 to 300 quid second hand with broken you know clips and all kinds of stuff on them so it goes to show the sort of you really need to check on eBay um, and you need to check what the actual part costs you because quite often a lot of the parts on eBay are more expensive than what they would be brand new straight from a supplier. I've just got these stainless steel clips that I'm putting in which are considerably better than the manky old clips that you get from Maserati that God knows I don't know how much they'd be. But anyway, I get these from Germany and they're stainless steel and they're identical actually. You can actually see that they're, they're identical but in stainless steel. So it's just brilliant. These clip uh, bolts are actually Fiat. Um, Maserati shared a parts bin with Fiat on this. And Maserati wants £2.67. These are about, oh, they're about a pound each I think off eBay. I'll put the links up. So yeah, just changing all those out, because under here it all looks very manky with these oral blow ones. But once the nice new shiny stainless steel ones are in, it looks a lot better, doesn't it? And it won't have a problem again, so I'm going to put grease on them. It's all very scuffed under here, but it's okay. There's no brakes or anything. So it'll be nice to have a proper under tray on her again. Right, it's wee mini disaster time. I couldn't get the under tray to fit properly and then I realised this bracket was bent. So I went to straighten it and even though I was really, really gentle because it's aluminium, it just snapped off. And a new one, oh, and the bolt had already snapped off. A new one though is uh, 22 quid. So by the time I get it with that and uh, delivery, it's going to be like 35, 40. I thought I'm not waiting for that. So I'm making one out of stainless steel. So that should be pretty strong on its own, but I'm going to weld in that little bit down there that I've marked up just to keep it a bit more straighter. It will still have the ability to bend, so not too strong should I hit something, but uh, strong enough that it should uh, keep everything nice and straight. So here's the uh, finished bracket. It's my version. Um, that should do the job, really. And the other one soaked them in weak. I was going to put a couple of tabs on the back, but then I thought, well, that's just for assembly, actually. On a production line, I don't think it's really necessary. I've kept it with a, a reasonably sized hole, so rather than a slot like that one has. So, yeah, I think we should be good. I'm not going to weld in a nut because you can get to this when you bolt the bumper on, so there's no reason to have a nut there. Again, that's assembly line stuff. And when you weld nuts, the problem is, is sometimes they distort a little bit and then don't work. Right, there you go. A full under tray. All nicely fitted. I've run out of bolts in a couple of places, so you stain the steel with a washer for now. I've got to order some more of these uh, Fiat Maserati bolts. They use them on Ferrari as well. But it's actually a Fiat. Um, yeah, they fit Fiat now for Romeo, so just got to order some more of those at some point. But yeah, a little scratches. <laughs> nice to have that proper under tray back on there, or on. Because now all the ducting to the rear, the front pegs should work. So then it come time just to stick that wheel on and finish the job. And as you can see, here's me using my hand as a hammer. What a stupid thing to do. Torque setting on these is 98 pound feet, which as you can see, didn't really require much work on top of the bit that I'd done with my hand. I really feel like those just don't feel like they're tight enough really for holding on such a massive wheel. Look at this. If I open the door like this, just open it a little bit, what happens? Straight away, he runs down the garden to try and get in the garage. He's always trying to get in this garage. Don't know why. 
just constantly trying to get in the garage. Must have a fascination with mechanical things.